theatre lighting through the first part of the kind of 20th century um, was, was reasonably similar in that you had a, a, quite a you know, fixed range of types of lights. So you would have floodlights, which literally just throw light everywhere. You'd have Fresnels uh, and PCs, which were kind of slightly more focusable, but still gave you a very you know, uh, soft spot of light, um, which you could basically change size of, but you couldn't really make sharp or you know, change the shape of. You then have profiles, which you can make absolutely sharp, and you can um, shutter. They have, tend to have four shutters, but I mean, you can create you know, more geometric shapes. Um, and then, you know, in the last kind of 15, 20 years, the advent of the moving light has come along and really kind of mixed things up. Because um, most moving lights, whilst either based on a profile or a Fresnel, uh, give you much more flexibility. Um, alongside the actual lights, you know, the way we used to and still do in our conventional lights, colour those is you have what's called gel, which is basically a coloured film that you put into the front of the light. And as well as coloured films, you have a thing called frost, um, which does, which makes, you know, takes the, the very sharp edge off a, off a, off a profile light. And it's a, a, an understanding of all the tools in this palette um, and using them well that you know, allows lighting designers to create quite complex, um, you know, the very polished, complex lighting pictures that you see on, on stages. Um, and you know, the world of moving lights, the pace of technology has really gathered from when they first were introduced, they were quite rough and ready. But in terms of the way they moved, their ability to mix colors, their ability to um, you know, sharpen or focus or change the shape used to be quite clunky. But in recent years, it's you know, become really smooth. And you will find shows that have got a, a lighting rig that's almost entirely made up of moving lights. The benefit to the lighting designer is it gives them much more instant flexibility in a technical rehearsal. They don't need to worry so much about have I rigged the light in the right place and have I got it focused in the right place. Um, right up to the you know, LEDs being the current uh, front runner um, in lighting technology, you know, they're getting cheaper and brighter and better quality all the time and uh, are now able to be used with a really, really wide range of colour temperatures. The problem with LEDs always used to be that you couldn't get light that felt natural. It felt very digital, it felt uh, you know, very electronic, but much more these days that's a barrier that's starting to be broken, I think. So I think the use of LEDs um, is becoming more common, but as, as I said earlier, I think the, the way in which they're used is still not quite, uh, there is no standard, if that, that makes sense. With tungsten light sources, you can use multiple different types on top of each other um, to create certain effects and to create certain, certain looks and feels. Um, you can do that with LEDs, but people are still trying to work out how that difference is because the colour and, and the way the output is not necessarily the same. It, it gives you a lot more brightness, but people still struggle and lighting designers that I've worked with and have come into this theatre are, are kind of still not quite convinced that they can replicate that same kind of feel that a tungsten light source would give you. With LEDs, really, you need to be able to think about how you get from one colour to another, in particular with LED technology, if you're going from red to green, because of the makeup of the unit and the number of different light sources, you tend to go through the spectrum a tiny bit. So it's kind of thinking, is that an aesthetic choice, but also how do we get through the spectrum without showing that to an audience if that's not what is needed? Because um, many people think that technology is a big time saver, which it is when it's, it's used properly, but also if it's not used very well, then you tend to kind of see things moving you tend to see colours changing, which might necessarily distract from the production, really. Yeah, so, um, you know, a lighting rig will be made up of a number of fixtures, and the number will vary depending on the size of the theatre and the size of the budget, I would guess. I mean, this, the show you see behind me, is very specific in that it's entirely lit from the light box above the set. But within the perimeter of that, there are a number of conventional lighting fixtures. But normally on a show in here, I would guess that we have somewhere between 100 and 250 lighting fixtures. So we bring the lights in, we rig the lights, we plug the lights in. 
the wiring goes back to a dimmer and then we use a lightning desk to tell which, you know, the dimmers what we want them to do, which dimmers we want on at what levels, at what points in the show. Um, and a single lighting desk will control you know, all of those units, um, all of those dimmers, and as well as turning the lights on and off, um, the lighting desks will talk to the moving lights to tell them you know, what position they need to take up, what the focus needs to be, what colour they need to be in. Um, and you know, when we use these things on a show, um, we will spend the technical rehearsal programming the lighting desk with a series of states.